Hi everybody, thanks for joining me again. And you can see I am once again in our Sunday school classroom. And um, you know, I should probably take you on a little tour sometime because nobody has seen the new Sunday school room since I painted it. So, but you can catch a little glimpse of our rainbow. And I think last time we had our doors in the background. So um, at least you can catch a little glimpse of what's going on in here. It's quite lovely. And I hope sometime soon, soon, we can all get together and hang out together in our classroom because it's so great. <laughs> so anyway, I'm happy to be here. I have a, um, another biblical mountain to share with you today where that's where we're going to be doing our hiking. Um, but to get started, we do have our question. Um, and today we're going to be talking about following Jesus. Um, especially in the times where it becomes a little bit difficult. Um, it's a challenge to do so. Um, but the thing is, is that the best part about that is that we don't normally make tough decisions alone. We are all part of a team when it comes to um, living a life of love and justice. So my question for you today is, can you think of some teams either in real life or um, maybe um, animated or uh, movies or um, fictional characters that work together for love and for justice. I just had a couple of things pop into my mind, but I'm curious to know what you were thinking. Um, so let me know, let me know what you think. What teams are out there that work together for love and justice because there's a team that has justice in its name if you know who I'm talking about and the other one that I thought about was Marvel characters the Marvel Universe they all fight for justice right so anyway okay so think about some other teams some other thing some other teams other than Marvel and Justice League okay all right and then we're gonna get ready to do our hike and learn about our new mountain and talk about kingdoms and abundance and love and the Beatitudes. And we're gonna finish this off and we're gonna have a great time, okay? All right. Okay, so just like every other week, we are joining a large crowd of people who are following Jesus up the mountain so that they can listen and listen to him um, do the Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes, and to learn about how to live a good life and all of the teachings that he was putting into place. And so we are going to join them on their hike. 20 seconds. You know the drill. You know what to do. So let's go. Great job, great job as always. So, okay, let's settle down and let's take a deep breath. Let it out and settle. Okay, good. Okay, so the mountain I'm sharing with you today is the mountains of Ararat and they are located in a country called Turkey. Now, these mountains were mentioned in the book of Genesis, and it is the mountain where Noah's ark landed and where he saw the rainbow. And I'm pretty sure you might not, I don't know if you're familiar with the entire story of Noah's ark, but I'm pretty sure you've heard of Noah and his ark and all the animals and when he saw the rainbow the rainbow of God's promise to never destroy the earth with a flood of that magnitude again. So that is why Mount Ararat is so important because it took place with Moses, uh, with Moses, with Noah and his ark. Okay, so there we go. 
All right. So. We have been talking every week about what it means to have a kingdom. And the kingdom is basically how the world is set up or how the culture is created. And in God's kingdom, the great thing about it is that there is abundance. There is enough for every child of God to live a full, fulfilled life full of everything that they need. Abundance with food and shelter and love and power and money and hugs and everything that they need, right? We know that. So that's what we strive for. Okay, so now we're going into the actual lesson from Jesus. And Jesus says, Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. Whew. Wow. Jesus ended the Beatitudes with a strong word of encouragement for us. In these final words, this is the end of the Beatitudes lessons that we learn from Jesus. He says again that his followers would be blessed for facing persecution. And last week we talked about that. Remember, we talked about persecution. And he knew that this one was going to be the toughest, the hardest thing um, keeping people from living out God's abundant love. It w it's hard. It's the challenge. It is the challenge of doing the right thing like we talked about last week. Now, Jesus told his listeners that it wasn't a matter of if they were persecuted, but when. And he knew when they tried to follow and live out his teachings, they would lose friends and be disliked and hear people say bad things about them or experience other types of harm. We touched on this last week. And we know that to follow Jesus is to face what he faced. And Jesus experienced all of these things that I just mentioned. But the good news is we are not alone. In this beatitude, Jesus pointed to the prophets, amazing and dedicated leaders who sided with the voiceless and powerless people. And they faced a lot of persecution. Uh, I'm wondering, um, the prophets, can you think of any prophets from the Bible? There are a lot of important people that we learn about in the Bible. And some of the prophets that we talk about, um, and I know that we talked about Deborah um, during youth group last year. And there's Elijah who appeared with Moses at the um, transfiguration of Jesus. We've also got Jeremiah and Daniel. Um, and those are all biblical prophets. But how about, do we have any modern day prophets? Um, you know, perhaps some people might consider uh, Martin Luther King in that kind of a concept. Or maybe Dorothy Day might be uh, someone that, you know, we would think about in that sense. Well, what we're doing is we're joining people from the ancient past and our more recent past and people that are all over the world today. And we're joining children and teenagers and adults and older adults. And we join with these people who want to create a world where other people can live free and without fear but it's something that requires us to work together. We have to do this, come together and work together. 
we also, when we do these things, when we come together to create a better world, we need to keep our hearts humble um, and our attitudes uh, calm because there might be times when we are the ones that misunderstand others and uh, are the ones that are kind of persecuting them with our judgment. And it is possible for us to be on the wrong side of a decision. Uh, I know it's probably hard to believe that could be true, but it sure does happen. And the thing to remember is, is that we are always learning and growing and trying to be better people. And that's the really important thing is that you continue to strive to be better. And, um, and everyone experiences things differently and has different, um, perceptions of things. And so that's why it's important when we don't understand a situation or why someone's saying something that they're saying or doing something that we're just kind of like, what is going on? It's really important that we take the time to ask questions and try and get, um, a better understanding of what's going on than just to make a judgment, just to make up your mind without really kind of digging in to learn more about it. So the thing is, is that, so Jesus is saying to us that we should be rejoicing when we are being persecuted. And does that make sense to you? Uh, do you normally rejoice when people misunderstand you or say mean things to you? I mean, I don't think that's a regular um, response to those situations. Um, it's not easy to rejoice when we're facing a difficult challenge. But here's the thing. Jesus reminds us that when we make brave choices which we've talked about, even if they're unpopular choices, we are creating a world that looks more like God's home. We also have a whole family of faith who is with us. People who followed God uh, thousands of years ago and people today who are with us as we follow in faith. And that is what is worth celebrating and being rejoiceful about. Okay, our activity today is going to be very fun and interesting, but before I talk about that, you know what time it is. It's time for a blessing. And you remember what a blessing is. It's something you receive. So hold out your hands and I'm going to say the words, and if you feel like you, they've fell into your hands, then you're gonna hold them close to your heart and take them in and just enjoy it. So your blessing for today. May you be blessed with joy and a whole team of supporters as you partner together to make the world a better place. Oh. We always want to strive to make the world a better place, to be better people. That's what it's all about. So, okay, let's talk about your coloring page today. It's a big one. There's lots of things to color. And, uh, you know, you've got your questions. How do you like to celebrate? Who do you join with to create a world where people can live freely and without fear? Who are some of the most joyful people you know? Why do you think they're truly joyful? That's a great one. And right off the head, off the top of my head, I thought of my friend Sue in Ohio. She is just, she's filled with joy. And I love being around her because she gives up the best energy. Do you have a friend like that that you just always want to be around because they just make you feel good? That's my friend Sue. Um, what does joy in following Jesus look like? And who are people of faith you look to for encouragement when you feel discouraged or struggle to follow Jesus' example? That's a great question too. And you know what? My friend Sue answers that question as well. 
because she has the purest faith of anyone I know. And that probably is why she's so filled with joy and why she's one of those people that you always want to be around. Okay. So have fun with your coloring page. I hope that like you get these colored and they're beautiful and you hang them like on your fridge or get to see them and, and talk about these questions because it's really kind of cool. So, okay. So then the activity today, have you ever played Mad Libs where you have to fill in a bunch of um, words, like answer questions, and then the words go into a story and it just makes up this crazy, uh, nonsensical, silly story. Well, that's what we're gonna do today. And I needed some help. So I had to call in on some of my friends to help me out. And, um, <laughs> and this is great, so I hope you enjoy it. Check out our silly activity story. Once upon a time, there was a group of children who noticed a problem with their school's playground. There was plenty of space to play. Monopoly. Fortnite. And. Basketball. There wasn't any safe space for their friend Taylor to play. Taylor used specialized crutches to walk. And the grassy surfaces of the school playground were difficult for her to walk on. One of Taylor's favorite playground activities was racing, but the grass and the sand made it almost impossible. During recess, Taylor would have to sit on the bench and read a book. Taylor's best friend, Noah, got frustrated every day and would say, Ooh, listen! I wish that this place were better for my friend. One day, Taylor and Noah talked about the problem with their parents over a delicious meal of chocolate, chicken wings, and pizza. The grown-ups listened very carefully and thought about the problem. Hmm, did you know that Taylor has a right to access the playground? Maybe the school needs to be reminded of that right. Yes! Taylor and Noah both exclaimed. Taylor and Noah made an appointment to meet with the principal, Ms. Reed, in her big kind office. They told her about the problem, but Ms. Reed just shook her head. I don't know where we could find the money to make those changes this year. I know it's important, but we just can't afford it. We already used up all the money from the turkey sale. Maybe next year. Taylor and Noah were discouraged. They felt as blue as my pants. Over the next few weeks, they spoke with the parent leaders, other teachers, and even the school board. Everyone said the same thing. We can't afford it. Some people even said mean things like, why would we spend all that money on one child? Why is it so important for her to play during recess? This made Noah angry and it made Taylor sad. Noah said, how do we help everyone understand that this isn't just about one person, it's about all of us. When one of us can't play, it hurts everyone. Are you thinking what I'm thinking, Noah? Taylor asked. I think so, Noah responded. Let's have a protest in the Kind Cafe. Their parents nodded in approval. Sure, we can make posters with paint and glue gun. Then we can march to the school and remind everyone that all children should be able to use the playground. Within a few weeks, word spread and the teachers and the school administration, that's the principal and his staff, 
and most of the community decided that this protest was very important. In fact, before the protest was even finished, they had convinced Principal Reed to make the necessary adaptations to the playground. Within three months, Noah and Taylor were walking side by side all over the playground. They felt good knowing that students would be able to enjoy the accessible playground for many years to come. And on a quick note on this great, wonderful story, how lucky are we as a community that we have a playground that is available for all, the all-inclusive, all-accessible playground for everyone. So very lucky indeed in our community, and what a great story, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for all the help, you guys. Okay, so if you wanted to do this on your own at home, um, you have this sheet and you can just, uh, you know, answer the, uh, the words or the phrases that you need to identify and then plop them in and make your own crazy story. So that was super fun. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and thanks to everybody who helped me make this fun story happen. So... Um, with that being said, that is our lesson today. So I ask you to join me in prayer so we can close out this week's lesson. Um, dear God, you are our biggest joy and hope. Thank you for all our siblings of faith who encourage and keep us strong. Help us encourage others. Plant our feet in your promise to always be our support, no matter what we face. We pray others will see and know you because of our unshakable joy. Amen. All right, everybody. Thanks again for joining me. And uh, we've got one left before we move into Advent and all of our uh, fun Advent activities that I'll be helping you go through. So take care, stay healthy, stay safe, and um, you are loved. Thanks so much for joining me. I'll see you next time. Bye.